Well, the strength in travel demand is providing cruise liners with some wind in its sails as Royal Caribbean looks to continue the travel optimism into the summer season. Yahoo Finance's Diane King Hall sat down with Royal Caribbean CEO Jason Liberty on the state of consumer demand and the type of customer the cruise line is servicing now. Take a listen. We saw incredible acceleration here in the first quarter in the demand environment which caused outperformance uh, in our first quarter. And we raised our guidance for the year, our earnings guidance for the year, by over 40%. Those trends continue to be very strong. Um, and we, you know, we get to you know, deliver 150,000 vacations every single day to our guests, and they're super happy. What about 2024 and beyond? Is it still smooth sailing? Yeah. Well, really, you know, for the past couple months, and certainly right now, most of the bookings we're taking on is for 2024. So the demand trends that we've seen earlier in the year is very much flowing into 2024 and even into 2025. And what are your ex expectations for EBITDA through 2025? We know you have the trifecta program where you're trying to hit three benchmarks. Where do you stand with that? Yeah, so we're very much on track for our trifecta goals. You know, one is to, uh, to, to get to triple digit EBITDA per APCD. Second one is to, is to be well into uh, the, the teens on an ROIC basis. Um, and then getting our earnings up, 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 up into the double digit zone. Um, again, as we burn off a lot of this negative carry uh, that we had to take in during the pandemic. So we feel really good about the cash flow generation of the business, um, and we feel we're very in line uh, with our trifecta goals. And let's talk about the customer, the type of customer you have now. There were people during the pandemic who said they would never return to cruise. Are you seeing a return of loyalists, previous customers, or are your customers now new to cruise? Yeah. So historically, you know, pre-pandemic, about a third of our guests were new to cruise, a third of our guests were loyalists, and a third of our guests were first to brand. Um, what we see now is one propensity to cruise has completely returned back to where it was in, in 2019. But we're seeing more new to cruise than we had seen in 2019. We're seeing more first to brand, which is very much in line with our growth expectations for our capacity growth as our new ships come on. And what about the demographics? Cruise tend to attract uh, more of middle-aged customers. And of course, you have families. What are the demographics like now? And what are you doing to attract younger customers? Yeah. So, so you know, we have really three core brands that are really in their different segments. And so they all address different um, age and demographic categories. Like our Royal brand is very focused um, on, on multi-generational family. Our, our celebrity brand, people that are in their early 50s, um, more Gen X. Um, in nature, and then our Silver Sea brand, which is ultra luxury and expedition, um, tend to attract a little a bit of the baby boomer um, side of things. What we are seeing is the guest is actually a little bit younger um, on average than what we saw pre-pandemic, and a lot of that is because there's more millennials that are now into the, the system as they got married and started to have kids and, and, and are looking to experience incredible uh, travel experiences. Like, That's awesome. Like us. All right, and talk to me about pricing. How is that holding up uh, in the face of consumers starting to make cutbacks in different areas of their life? We're hearing that from different uh, industries, different companies. Uh, what are you seeing and how are you dealing with that from a pricing basis? Yeah, so we've actually seen and we continue to see the ability to raise price in the current market. It, which is somewhat counterintuitive to you know, the point you just made and also counterintuitive to some of the information out that's, that's out there. The main driver of that, um, one, I think, is you know, having best brands, best ships win. Um, and our guests you know, get this incredible experience on our ships, and that gets uh, broadcasted through advocacy of our, of our guests who are, who are experiencing that. But there's also a pretty significant value gap to land-based vacation. Um, and so as, as RevPAR and other things went up on the hotels and land-based vacations, you know, we have that opportunity now to begin to close that gap. And that gap was about 15, 20 percent pre-pandemic. Today it's about 35 to 45 percent. And we're going to make a, you know, a, a, a pretty good dent in it here in, uh, in 2023. Is revenge travel still a thing? I think it's less about revenge travel. We don't really see, in our surveying of our guests, it's more that the guest has shifted back to this trajectory of experiences outpacing buying stuff. And that's what we're seeing from our guests and what we and, and what we collect in our survey data is they bought enough stuff. What they want to do is collect experiences, create stories with their friends and family and loved ones. Um, and fortunately, that that's a that's, that's what we do for a living. OK. And I got to ask you about tipping. Tipping is a big part of cruise life, your waiter, your steward, your purser. Uh, but there's been kind of this backlash about tipflation. How do you keep customers and staff happy given that kind of climate? 
Yeah, so you know, so we're we're not in a place where we're you know we're charging for um, you know a, a kitchen fee or those type of things. You know, we we have a gratuity. Um, it, it raises typically just based off of how inflation is changing, um, and that's that's more what it is. It's pretty much a standard fee. Of course, our guests can can provide more. The guests can also choose not to you know not to tip if they don't you know choose to. But but a gratuity based system, a service based system, we think is really important. But we're not you know chopping at every corner here. On, on tipping, uh, you know, we have a you know, pretty much a standard uh, fee for it. And one more question for you: What's the China story like for you now? As demand come back? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we're you know now that you know we now have a, a better you know view on um, how China was how China is going to start back up. Our plan is to re-enter China next year. Um, so we're starting up that sales and marketing machine for China, which was an incredible market for us pre-pandemic. We know that the Chinese consumer loves to cruise. Um, they love our brand, the Royal Caribbean brand um, in, the, in that marketplace, and uh, we expect to be there next year.